Calling it social emotional learning is, is current jargon, but I think it's misleading in the sense only that when it's framed as social emotional learning, it tends to be reduced to a content that can be delivered. Yes, it ends up being something you can teach again, doesn't it? That's the myth. Yeah. That's the problem of SEL. Yeah. We need a more sophisticated way of thinking about curriculum than just content to be delivered. We need to look at situations as having a structure that is a social curriculum mm. in the sense that it requires things of people, of individuals. Yeah. With English, have content that or at least I have, a, you know, there's a curriculum, there's a methodology that, depending on the student and depending on where they're coming from and where they want to go, mm -hmm. that I have learnt as part of my teacher training. But something actually at the IDEC I really saw was how, as a subject expert, I still have very much a part to play and that my subject mm -hmm. expertise is not invalidated by... Right student-led learning. What I was getting at is the more important to me is not necessarily even within the content area, but the ways in which those students arrive in front of you as a teacher. The nature of democratic schools is such that mm -hmm. there's a different process for them to be arriving in front of any teacher, is that yeah. there's more of a sense of agency about why they're there. The motivation is going to be more autonomous and less controlled, to put it in the dichotomy we now use. One of the myths in the democratic education world, and most of education world, is assuming that it's going to all be intrinsically motivated. That's not true. It doesn't need to be intrinsically motivated, but it does need to be in a context, a social context, in which mm -hmm. their agency and their ability to, to uh, influence how and why they end up doing any given thing yeah. is either autonomously motivated or if it's not autonomously motivated, it's happening in a context that is so need supportive, psychologically need supportive, that if they're starting something from a controlled motivation point, their needs are so well supported that they internalize the requirements of the situation and mm -hmm. then become autonomously motivated for continuing the work. And this is one of those subtle aspects of the motivational models, even outside of democratic education, everywhere in education is misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Literally yesterday, somebody was sending out, I, I can't remember which organization, uh, one doing good work uh, in the world, you know, maybe student-centered, student-led, something. And they're saying, oh, let's talk about intrinsic motivation. And it's like, just, just the fact that they're still right. using yeah. that term. Yeah tells me that they're it's not on the right track. They're yeah. not tuned into yeah. the actual science anymore. That was a thing. That's where the field started, was distinguishing intrinsic from extrinsic. But decades ago, they realized that that was not an adequate way of describing what's really going on. And yeah. most important, and even today, even if they're you know, shifting their language to autonomous, they're not talking about internalization as the process that changes motivation over time. And that's where my work is right now. I just taught a workshop. So to give a little context, Christine and I met at the <laughs> International Democratic Education yeah, Conference yeah. in Nepal, in Kathmandu specifically. And after the conference, having met somebody who owns a cafe in Pokhara in Nepal, which is the, another big city and a relatively big area in Nepal, she arranged to have me teach a workshop. And so I did a workshop on the science of motivation. My workshop is really emphasizing that you can change the pattern of motivation that someone has in a given situation with your parent, teacher. Obviously, I emphasize teaching because that's the context that my work is, but really trying to help people understand that one, intrinsic, extrinsic is not the dichotomy we use anymore. We talk about autonomous versus controlled, but more important than the motivation at any given moment is do you understand how you can change motivation over time? And, and that can go either direction. You can either be supporting needs such that they internalize the requirements of the situation and become more autonomously motivated, or if their needs are not being met, and this is what happens over time in mainstream schools, their needs are not being met, and so they externalize, and so the motivation becomes more controlled, not more autonomous. 
This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world, where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. <laughs> 